Hello, I'm Alex Davies, founder of Wealth Club, and today I'm with William Horlick, manager of the Draper Spree VCT, formerly known as Elder Street VCT. Hello, William. Hi, Alex. Um, first off, can you give us a bit of background about the VCT? Yes, uh, the VCT is one of the earliest VCTs. It was founded in 1998 under the name Elder Street Downing Venture Capital Trust. Um, and it's a relatively mod modest size, uh, 20 million. Um, uh, which in the today's market is quite small. Um, in 2016, we realized we needed to um, get together with another party, and so we signed a co-investment agreement with Draper Esprit PLC, who um, have taken a stake in our business. Um, it's been a huge reinvigoration of the VCT. Um, Draper Spree PLC are listed on the AIM market. They floated in 2016. Uh, they have um, over 500 million of funds under management and a market cap of 500 million. Um, they also happen to have four unicorns in their portfolio as of today, and they're totally focused on tech investing. Um, since we did that deal with them, we have doubled the size of the business. We raised another 20 million um, pounds under management, so the NAV is 40 million, and we have made 15 investments with um, their syndicate partners, the EIS fund, which is the most highly rated EIS fund by Martin Churchill over the last five years. So we're delighted to be in with our friends, Draper Esprit, and we think it's a really good result for our shareholders. So what's your VCT aim to do for investors? Well, um, Draper Spree have got a portfolio growth return of 20% per annum. And if we can tie that up with our 5% yield that we've been paying shareholders, we think that's a really attractive proposition. What does Draper Spree bring to the party? Well, we've gone from a team of two to 23. Um, they have a global reach through the Draper Venture Network. Um, strong ties into the US and the Far East, so we can use that leverage for our portfolio companies. So the way it works over these three funds is that our VCT invest alongside the EIS funds and the PLC funds together on the same terms, which means we're doing pretty large deals now. Um, we can invest £10 million a go into these businesses, which for the VCT gives really good strong syndication. It's a really big positive for our Portfolio. So can you give me examples of the types of companies you were looking to invest in? Yes, the sectors that we're focusing on now are pure technology. So we invest in uh, consumer, um, enterprise, hardware and health tech. So an example of hardware is Podpoint, which people may know of. It's an electric, um, electric vehicle charging points. They're one of the largest independent ones left in the UK since uh, Chargemaster, a Beringer investor, was acquired by BP. So we're very pleased with that. It's growing very strongly, revenues of over 10 million pounds. Uh, another example of a health tech business is um, Endomag, which is cancer tracing and marking technology. Um, this is a business, um, deep skill set out of Cambridge, and um, they're making very good progress in the US. They have revenues of over five million pounds. Um, and they are, have their product in over 30 countries globally. And what about the existing portfolio? Um, obviously very different companies that you've um, built up in the past. Um, do you want to talk about those? Yes, so um, if I talk broadly about what people would be buying into, today um, the NAV is made up of 30% in Draper Esprit tech companies, 40% uh, of the value is in you call the legacy businesses, and I'll get back to that, the balance is in cash. So within the legacy portfolio, 91% uh, of the value is held within four companies. Two of those are on AIM, so they're independently valued. One's a software business, one's a gas utilities business. Um, one turns over £8 million, the other turns over £45 million. Within the private companies, there are two businesses there. One is a um, business called Ford's Technology from Bedford. Uh, that's a tech business, but in the hardware space. So they have developed uh, capping and sealing machines which go on the end of production lines for, for example, dairy producers. So if someone is um, capping yogurts, for example, they're moving down a production line, which is 24-7, vast speed, 
Ford's product is on the end of this, putting the aluminium foil on it. Um, that business turns over eight million pounds. It's regularly made EBITDA of over a million pounds. This year, although I can't give forecasts, we think will be a record year for it. That's, that's a terrific example of good technology, um, new management reinvigorating that business. Um, the other business is a shotgun cartridge manufacturer called Larvel Express. Again, it's a, a, a profitable business, so it pays a lovely dividend every year. So I assume there's quite a temptation to keep on to these existing companies so they can pay dividends whilst the new ones prosper. Yes, or, I mean, it's a very good point because the new tech businesses we're doing, we can't gear those up. It's wrong to gear up software businesses in our belief, so there's no loan stock in there. Um, while they're using their capital to grow more quickly and um, increase their value, there will be no dividends from those businesses. So yes, um, it's very nice to get uh, the dividend from those legacy businesses, um, but it won't, um, it won't stop us from selling those at the right time that we feel. There's also a balance to be had uh, amongst the qualifying piece as well. So we will sell down some of those businesses over time. And of course that will be repaid in dividends. And the newer companies you're choosing, the new companies you're choosing, what sort of um, exit are you targeting? Well, we're, we're patient capital. A lot of people say they want to sell their businesses in three to five years. We, we just don't really believe that, that that's right, because if you have a business that's doing well, we have no need to sell these businesses. Uh, in a rush, we would much rather hold on to them and, and hold the capital appreciation within the funds. So um, we're not typically like a limited partnership and a venture capital firm with a, a life of seven to eight years. We can hold on to these businesses till we have grown them to a position where we can sell them. Um, the majority of the businesses that are sold from Draper Esprit's portfolio are to trade. And since the IPO in 2016, the average return on the businesses that have been sold has been 2.6x. Um, worth noting that there's only been one business that has returned nothing. I mean, this is a risk business that we're in, but um, we're pretty good at getting out of these businesses and getting some money back off the table. So of the new investments, is there a model that you know, X percent will fail or is there any? Uh, yes, um, I think in our business we're used to um, uh, failures. Um, we, we like to work very hard on them to make sure that we, we don't actually lose all our money. Um, that's happened in, in a few rare occasions. Um, in the main, we are going to make uh, two to three X and you have the chance of making some very, very large returns, 10x plus. And um, if I can give you an example of one of these businesses, Graphcore, which is uh, an AI chip manufacturer, and that business came into Draper Esprit um, through uh, a contact that they backed previously. Um, that business they backed in 2016 in the EIS and PLC funds, um, they put five to 10 million pounds into that business. It has just been backed by uh, Microsoft and BMW uh, Ventures for a price of over one and a half billion pounds. Mm. They're in a, in, a, in a huge area where if this chip works, um, they will be a very valuable company. Mm. As you say, you say it's not in the VCT, and also that you mentioned four unicorns, which that is one of them in Draper Esprit's investment portfolio, not the VCT. Is there a danger that all these things are, you know, very highly over, you know, are very overvalued at the moment? Yes, we, we're at a, a pretty peak time in the market. Mm. We've been there before. We, we've all seen it before, 99, 2007. Um, but what we're doing is ensuring that we're investing in businesses that actually have good IP, good product, uh, and what we think are stellar management. So although the market may come off a little bit, if you've got a good business in there, which is growing pretty quickly, and we're targeting these 20% annual growth rates in, in turnover, then if the valuations got, have got slightly ahead of themselves, then they can grow into those valuations in the future. So we talked about the things which uh, seem to be working out well for you. What hasn't worked out so well? Well, uh, we backed a software business um, about three years ago, 
I had some very good IP, building it in the software and asset management space. Um, unfortunately, we just could not get the sales traction in that business. We grew it to a certain size, but we just couldn't crack the uh, sales model in any uh, real scalable way. Um, the net result was we did actually sell that business. We sold it to a, an, an American acquirer. Uh, we got back just under our cost. Um, which validates what I said previously about if you invest in good IP um, that is, uh, we think is valuable to other people, then uh, that business will monetize it for themselves. Unfortunately, we couldn't monetize it for our shareholders, but it's a good business and it was sold. And as I said, we returned just under cost. So if I'm going to invest in a VCT this year, there's quite a lot of competition out there. Um, why should I invest with you? Well, we're slightly different, we think, to uh, a lot of the others. Um, we're doing larger deals. Um, we've got a, a huge team now, 23 experienced people. We've been around the block, some of the guys from 3i, Casanova. I've been in the game for 20 years with my colleague Michael Jackson, who was the chairman of Sage and back Micromuse, uh, a billion dollar business on NASDAQ back in 1996. So there's a lot of experience. We have a lot of contacts, a lot of deal flow. Uh, that's a big positive for us. Um, if we can give you the targeted portfolio growth of 20% within our businesses, couple that with our 5% dividend, um, I think that's reasonably attractive. If you like the technology space, we're probably a VCT you should consider. Um, and we've got pretty low costs on uh, an annualized basis. Our total expense ratio TER is about 2.8%. We think that'll come down a bit further. Um, and if you invest before the 28th of Feb, you'll get a 1.5% early bird incentive as well from our fees. William Horlick of um, the Draper's Free VCT, thank you very much. Thanks, Alex.